a presentation or based on a report that I've done on passive fire protection. Yeah. Ensuring the safety and well-being of residents is a, is a critical uh, thing in every educational institute. Auckland College of Tertiary Studies, located potentially at 67 Simon Street, Auckland, New Zealand, is one of the uh, examples of a very well um, fire-rated building. Uh, with seven levels, uh, with academic activities, the institution acts as a hub for students, instructors and staff alike creating an environment favorable to intellectual development. So my report was on uh, how the passive fire protection has been installed in uh, UP College, especially in uh, Auckland College of Tertiary Studies, which is located on the seventh floor. So before we go into that, we should first know what uh, passive fire protection is. So um, any fire protection system where human uh, interference is not there is uh, passive fire protection. Yeah. And also where there is no uh, usage of energy, any anything which is protecting fire in the building but there's no usage of energy or power, that will also be considered under passive fire protection. Uh, for an example, I can give you um, you all must have heard about the 9-11 uh, World Trade Center uh, uh, situation. So the whole building collapsed with fire, almost half of the building, just because it was not properly fire rated. So uh, fa passive fire protection is really very important because, uh, yeah, certain fires are very small, but if there is a very uh, big fire uh, accident, you can't just be uh, relied on active fire protection because you have to save yourself. So in that case, passive fire protection helps you a lot. So in this uh, college, uh, there are many passive fire protections, but uh, these are the uh, five main uh, which I have uh, conducted my report on. Uh, first one is fire doors and hardware, next uh, uh, penetration and seals, then documentation and records, testing and certification, and compartmentation. Fire rated doors. The installation and specifications of fire rated doors at the College of uh, the College follow uh, NZBC Clause F7 warning system and F8 signs assuring compliance with the relevant requirements. So uh, the doors which are installed in this college uh, are all um, they all come uh, uh, under the clauses. They all uh, meet the requirements which are uh, given in the clauses. Like supposing this uh, door, it is made up of wood, but it's a uh, fire-treated wood, so it can withstand up to 60 minutes of fire without penetrating into uh, the next room. Fire-rated walls, just like the doors, the walls are also made of materials which prevent fire. Uh, even if there's a fire, it will take a minimum of uh, an almost an hour for the fire to collapse the wall or to uh, for, or the fire to penetrate to another uh, side. So uh, protection from fire, CASI, CAS7, CAS1, CAS7, acceptable solutions and F8 signs are also there. Next coming up with penetration and seals. Uh, though we are, we are very well installed with the fire protection doors and the walls, there might be a few gaps which will lead uh, uh, for, uh, which will lead the fire to penetrate and uh, uh, go to another part of the building. So uh, even if there is uh, proper walls and doors, you need proper ceilings to seal the areas so the fire doesn't penetrate. So specific requirements for fire penetration and seals can be found in various clauses of the building code, particularly in the clauses related to the fire safety section C. Uh, and means of escape from fire clause C3. Documentations and records. Uh, as we all uh, were present uh, the other day where we had a fire drill in mm -hmm. our uh, college. Mm -hmm. So uh, when there is a fire drill, it is important to even record what they have uh, uh, documented, like supposing um, there was actually some fire they would see that and they would uh, record it. Obviously, we won't have the access to that, but the, whoever is the, in charge of the building or the president will have the proper documents, which we were not allowed to access, so uh, we, I couldn't get more information on that. So uh, clause C1 objectives of clause C2 to C6, this clause outlines the over 
overreaching objectives of the sections related to the fire safety, including the need for documentation and compliance with fire safety requirements. Testing and certification. Class C1 objectives of class C2 to uh, C6. This clause establishes the overreaching objectives of these sections related to fi uh, fire safety. Uh, clause C3, fire performance of materials, components, and structures. This clause specifically addresses the fire performance requirements for materials, components, and structures used in building. Even for uh, uh, fire, uh, such kind of fire protection, they will, there should be a testing done and the testing has to be recorded because they will be installed and it will take like many years and they might not perform their activity. So it's very important for them to get tested on regular intervals and also to get it documented. Okay. Compartmentation. In nuclear building code, requirements related to compartmentation of building for fire safety are primarily addressed in clause C3 fire performance of materials, components, and structure, and clause C4, safety from fire. These clauses outline standards and principles of ensuring the building are adequately compartmented to prevent the spread of fire and smoke. So this is a building, uh, this is how it looks like from the outside. You can clearly say it is very properly compartmented even from the outside. Also internally you can see there are uh, glazed windows, the floors are all sealed, they are all ceilings present. So the compartmentation has done really well. Uh, the architecture has done a really good job with that and that is uh, one of the major uh, passive fire protection. So the recommendations are, since uh, this college has multiple uh, smaller uh, groups, uh, since we are doing uh, uh, construction management, we know what to do when there is a fire, uh, uh, when there is a fire accident in the college. But there are a lot of other groups which are into makeup, though, which are into healthcare. They might not know what to do when there is a fire. So um, we had a fire drill, but we were not informed later on what to do, what are the measures to be taken. So I think, uh, uh, since we all know the other colleges in this group should be also aware uh, how much we are aware of what to do when there is a fire. So staying informed is one recommendation I could give. And uh, fire safety training. Yeah, we all have fire safety training because we do construction management and fire safety is one of the major things in that. But uh, I'm not sure if the other colleges in the same building are informed. So I think uh, they also should be a part of fire safety training and also be well informed. Any questions? Okay, it was good, eh? especially, guys, you listen. It was good presentation because especially she explained it, she gave examples, okay? Uh, examples to you guys. Eh? Now, what are the two recommendations? Stay informed. Uh, after the fire drill, we, we didn't do anything. We just came back and sat. Good. Stay informed. Now, listen. All of you, because you are uh, construction management students, okay? So what do you have to do? Now you have to share your knowledge with your colleagues, okay? So you have friends here who are not studying in construction management. This way, this way they can get more information, okay? So you can share this information with your colleagues. In the, in the, the people who are around you guys, okay? Maybe your 